Hey everyone, welcome back to the Catalyst 9800-101 series. My name is Justin Liu, a technical marketing engineer here in Cisco's Enterprise Network Wireless team. Last time, we covered how to create a WLAN using the basic setup workflow. And today in episode 3 of this series, we'll be going over how to create a WLAN using the advanced design workflow. And like before, we are using the devices in the dCloud lab. In this episode, we'll be using the advanced setup workflow to create a WLAN profile, create a wireless policy profile, create a policy tag, then we'll tag the AP, and finally wrap up the episode by testing the connectivity of our newly created WLAN. But before we get started, let's review the 9800's configuration model. As mentioned in the last episode, the 9800 settings have been logically decoupled and modularized into three tags, policy, site, and RF. These tags can be reused and applied to different AP groups for your sites. The policy tag defines the broadcast domain, or the list of WLANs to be broadcasted at the site, along with the policies of the respective SSIDs. This is equivalent to the AP group in AROS. The site tag defines the properties of the central and remote sites, as well as defining the roaming domain for Flex APs. For Flex APs, this is equivalent to the Flex groups in AROS. For local mode APs, there is not a limit for how many APs that can be associated to a site tag. However, for Flex mode APs, there's a limit of 100. And finally, the RF tag defines the RF properties of the group of APs. When using the basic configuration model, these are all abstracted from the user and created and tagged to the AP automatically. Okay, now let's jump into the web UI of our 9800 and get started. So now that we're in the web UI of the 9800, let's access the advanced configuration wizard. To do this, we'll go up to the top and click on the wireless icon, and for wireless setup, we'll choose advanced. This brings us to the wireless setup flow overview. So now we'll click start now to begin the configurations. So the first step is to create a WLAN profile. And to do this, under tags and profiles, we'll first go to WLAN profile and click the plus button right next to it. And here this will bring us to the WLAN creation wizard. The profile name will be pod1-psk. And when we leave that field, the SSID will automatically populate. You can change this to whatever you need, but we will leave it as is. For a WLAN ID, we will leave as two, and then in status, we'll enable. Next, we'll go to the security tab. And for layer 2 security mode, we'll leave it as is as WPA plus WPA2. And next we'll scroll down to auth key management, and we will select PSK and deselect 802.1x. And for the pre-shared key, we'll be using Cisco 123, all lowercase. And to verify, we'll click the eye icon and just double check that it is correct, and click apply to device. So the next step is to create the wireless policy profile. So to do this, on the left side, we'll go to Policy Profile and click the plus button. For the policy profile name, we'll name it Local Policy. And then for description, we'll leave it blank. And then for the status, we'll enable it. Next, we'll go to the Access Policies tab. And here we'll select the VLAN which you want the clients that connect to the WLAN to be on. So in this case for our VLAN, we're gonna choose a management VLAN. So now to ensure that our clients get an IP address via DHCP, we'll go to the Advanced tab, and in the DHCP section, we'll check IPv4 DHCP required. For the DHCP server IP address, this will be the IP address of the Active Directory server from dCloud. So the IP address is 198.18.133.1. And finally, we'll scroll all the way to the bottom and click Apply to Device. So now we'll have to create the policy tag, and here this will map the WLAN profile to the wireless policy profile, so that when clients connect to our WLAN, it will use the access policies defined in the policy profile. So to do this, we'll go to the left side and click the plus button right next to policy tag. For the policy tag name, we will name it local PSK. And next, we'll map our WLAN to our wireless policy profile, so we'll click the add button. And for the WLAN profile, we'll select the pod1 PSK WLAN that we had created. And for the policy profile, we'll select the local policy profile that we created. And then we'll click the checkbox to save the mapping. And now we'll click apply to device to save the policy tag. After creating the policy tag, we'll next need to create the AP join profile, the flex profile, and then map those to the site tag. However, for this video, I will be using the site tag in the AP join profile that was created in episode two in the basic WLAN design workflow. I won't need to create a flex profile because my APs will be in local mode. So to create an AP join profile, we'll go to the plus button next to AP join profile. And here you can put the settings that will be applied to the APs whenever they join the WLC. 
such as the NTP server that the APs will use, whether or not the LEDs on the AP should be on or off, as well as other settings such as the credentials that will be used when you log on to the console of the AP. And when you're done, click apply to device, but I'm going to cancel out of here because I'm using the default AP join profile. Next, we'll create the flex profile. So we'll go to the plus button next to flex profile. And in the add flex profile window, you'd put settings such as the native VLAN ID of the flex profile, as well as the VLANs that will be present on the flex APs. And when you're done, click apply to device. But again, I'm gonna cancel out of here because I'm using a local mode AP. And finally, for the AP join and flex profiles created, you'll have to map this to a site tag. So to do this, click the plus button next to the site tag. And here you can name the site tag, choose the AP join profile that you had created, the control plane name, and then whether or not you want it to be a flex or local mode AP. For the local mode, you'll make sure the box is checked for enable local site. And if you're using a flex mode AP, you'll have to uncheck the box and then select the flex profile that you created. And when you're done, click apply to device. But again, I'm going to cancel out of the window. The next steps are now to create the RF profiles that you want for the APs, and then map those to the RF tag. Like the site tag, I'll be using the RF tag that was created in the basic WLAN design workflow in the previous episode. So to create an RF profile, we'll go to the Add button next to RF Profile. And in the Add RF Profile window, you would input the required RF parameters for your site. And when you're done, click Apply to Device. Now we'll need to map the RF profiles to an RF tag. To do this, we'll click the plus button next to RF tag. And here you can select the name for the RF tag, and then select the 5 GHz band and 2.4 GHz band RF profiles, and click apply to device to save. With the three tags created, policy, site, and RF, it is now time to tag the APs. To do this, we'll click on the list button next to the tag APs. This will bring us to a page with a list of the APs that are joined to our WLC. Select the APs that you need to tag, go to the checkbox next to each of their names, and click on it. And when you're done, click Tag APs. So here you can assign the tags for your APs. So for Policy Tag, we'll choose Local PSK. And then for Site, we'll choose Pod1 Location, which was created last episode using the basic WLAN design workflow. And finally for RF Tag, I'll be using the Pod1 Location tag as well. Now that I'm done, I'll click Apply to Device. And this will cause my APs to disjoin from the WLC and then rejoin the WLC with the correct tags. This will take a minute or two, so we'll return once the AP has rejoined our WLC. So now we're back in the dashboard and the AP has rejoined our WLC after about a minute or two. So now to verify that the tags that we push to the AP have indeed been assigned to it, we'll click on the one next to the APs that have joined. And here in the AP statistics, we can see that the site tag of pod one location, the policy tag local PSK, and RF tag pod one location have indeed been assigned to the AP. So now let's verify the connectivity of our WLAN. So in my iPhone, let's go click on the settings app and go to Wi-Fi. Here let's search for the SSID of our WLAN, and here it is, pod one PSK. And we'll log in using the password Cisco123, and then click join. Now that the iPhone has joined the WLAN, we can go into the settings and see that it has indeed got an IP address via DHCP, and it is 198.19.11.11. We can also verify on the WLC by going back to the dashboard and clicking on the one active client. And for the client that's connected, it has an IP address of 198.19.11.11, matching what was received on our iPhone confirming that the iPhone has indeed successfully joined the WLAN we created. And with that, we reached the end of episode 3 of the Catalyst 9800-101 series. In summary, we use the advanced setup workflow to create a WLAN profile, create a wireless policy profile, map that together in a new policy tag, tag the AP, and verify the connectivity of our newly created WLAN. Please join us next time where we will go over how to configure application visibility and QoS policies, as well as how to configure local profiling on the WLC. If you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.